from the fear of our enemies may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray to set our hearts right so we will hear the scripture. Father God, teach us how to dance to the rhythm of your wisdom. Show us how to laugh with the insight of your truth, so that we can live for the praise of your glory. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The first reading is from the seventh chapter of Amos, beginning with the seventh verse. This is what the Lord God showed me. The Lord was standing beside the wall built with a plumb line with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. <clears throat> then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of the people of Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And will rise again against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, said to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear his words, for thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from this land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, earn your bread there, and prophesy there. But never again prophesy in Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is the temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Psalm 85 is responsive, and I will ask you to respond with the whole. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall be before the Lord, and shall prepare for God a pathway. The second reading is from, is from the first chapter of Ephesians, beginning with the third verse. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined for us adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the love. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he has lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven, and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him, who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who are the first to set our hope on Christ, 
might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you have heard the truth, word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise to the gospel reading. The holy gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. King Herod heard of the disciples preaching, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah, and others said, it is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, found him, and put him in prison on the account of Herodias, his brother, his Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came. When Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee, when his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and the guests, and the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask, I will give, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately, she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me the head of John the Baptist on a flag. The king was deeply grieved. Yet, out of regard for his oath and for the guest, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately, the king sent a soldier with a guard and the orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in prison, wrapped his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. So yesterday, I went on several walks. And on one of my early morning walks, I ran into a few church families at the farmer's market. During our brief conversation, they mentioned that it might be 
when I listen in to my colleagues on what they hear from the text and the direction that they are going with the sermon. There is a lot in this gospel reading. And the story of the beheading, why it occurred, can be very unsettling. I did not hear from a colleague in my circle group that said that they were going in the direction of courage. However, I think that there is courage from both John and his followers. And we can learn from them. John was a man that did not duck from controversy. He was also very bold and kept yelling, repent, 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 and always pointing to Jesus. His boldness and not playing it comfortable is what ended him being tossed in the prison. And then eventually costing him his life. Herod had the power and he used his power to take the life of John. Thus, in this story, John was driven by the power of the word of God and was silenced by Herod, a man who wields the power of a sovereign Roman state. The government turned to violence and once again was triumphant. They have silenced the preacher and have won. Right? Well, if Lee Corso was here, he would use his signature line for college game day. Not so fast, my friends. Many would say and argue that Herod executed John to shut him up. But look at us. Here we are in Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin, which is over 6,000 <coughs> miles away, and we are about 2,000 years removed from the execution, and we are still talking about John and his work, and we're really not even talking about that Herod guy. We only talk about Herod because he's connected with John. The story is still being told. Amazing. Then, guess what? We, we are still part of that story that is being told. I mentioned that John was courageous. And that is only obviously, I believe. But we see that his followers and disciples were also courageous. It can be missed up. Hear the last four verses again, this time from the message. That sobered up the king really fast. But unwilling to lose face with his guest, he came in and let her have her wish. The king sent the executioner up to the prison with the orders to bring back John's head. He went, cut off John's head, brought it back on a platter, and presented it to the girl, who gave it to her mother. When John's disciples heard about this, they came, got the body, and gave it a decent burial. I'm not sure about you, but I have missed that last sentence numerous times. One final time. When John's disciples heard about this, they came, got the body, and gave it a decent burial.
your government official and ask for the body so they could give it a proper burial. They had courage. Thus, the courage did not die with John. His followers carried it on. Thus, this last sentence tells us a lot that we did not know. The courage that John had and the courage that his followers had needs to carry on. Do we have the ability to be courageous? I think the answer to that question is yes. When we are courageous, great ministry can be done, and individuals can look at you and us as a church and point a finger at you, at me, and at us, and go, you know, there is something different about them. The gospel of Jesus carries on. It carries on every time you shine light into the darkness. It carries on every time that you are willing to stand up to hate and speak words of love. It shows when you see the injustices occurring in our society, can you try to bring justice to the table? Having courage can be tough, no question about it. But maybe you can cling on to the promise that there is nothing, there is no power on earth that will be able to defeat you because the power of God in Jesus as one. I want us to have the courage to speak up. Silence might preserve one's life, but silence will not do in the call to proclaim God's reign. In our lives and in our ministries, we will have the opportunity to be silent or to speak up. At times, it might be much safer to keep quiet. I know many times members of the congregations that I have served may wish that I was silent and did not rock the boat. But I have difficulty with that at times. So let me conclude on the following quote that is often attributed to Bonhoeffer. Silence in the face of evil is itself evil. God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. Amen.
mind, we are lifting up to those who are close to our hearts and our minds and connected to this church body. So please remember Paul, Donovan, Vicki, Mimi, Janet, Deanna, and Chris, Kevin and Kathy, Stephen, Dan, Sasha, Fred and Darlene, Sandy, David, Rusty, Shelby, Kayla, Rich, Carl, Tisha, Dale, Beth, Lois, Ken, Michael, Verna, Karen, Sue, Larry, and the family and friends of Marty Lord. Be with us and watch over us and shower them with extra love, comfort, and peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. And may you sign the show of peace with those around you. Say it to you. You may be seated. And we will be collecting our offering at this time. <coughs>
If you are unable to come up front, let us know. The ushers will then direct us to come back to you in the pews. And then one final note upon that. The task force is going to be meeting this week to be looking and evaluating on how we might be able to proceed in a different way with I will ask my ushers and assistants to the table. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come.
Then in the same manner, he took the cup, he blessed it. The blood of Christ shed for you, for take. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your faith more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. At this time, if you are able, I will ask you to stand for our sending blessing and sending song.